One input that we haven't examined very much so far is the sinusoidal input. And a very handy fact that uh, works with sinusoids is that anytime you add up two sinusoids of the same frequency, it doesn't matter what their phase is, you're going to get another sinusoid at the same frequency and some other phase. Here's what we mean mathematically. Here's a sine and a cosine, which are two sinusoids that are 90 degrees apart. And yet their sum is just going to be another sinusoid at the same frequency with phase phi and amplitude e. e and phi we can find using uh, various formulas. And uh, here's just an example is if you need to find c and d from e and phi or vice versa, you can use these formulas here. It's not terribly important to uh, remember these formulas, but it, they're very helpful and it's good to know where you can find them. Anytime you add two sinusoids of the same frequency, you know what it's going to look like. It's going to be, again, another sinusoid. It's going to be the same frequency as whatever you started with. So the amplitude E, or the height E, is going to be different generally from what you started with. And also, there's going to be some phase shift phi. Also, I want to point out that when we write omega t plus phi for the cosine, this is equivalent to shifting the co cosine to the left by an amount phi. Let's do an example. This is a familiar differential equation, x dot plus 2x is equal to 2 cosine t. We're going to follow our regular procedure, which includes the homogeneous solution, which we've done many times before, x h of t is equal to a e to the negative 2t. Then there's the particular solution where remember that we're going to follow a template where whatever our input is tells us what kind of particular solution there's going to be. And that's just going to be c cosine t plus d sine t, where the frequency of the sinusoid is what's given to us by our input. So in this case, our frequency is just 1. So that's why we end up with cosine 1t, d sine 1t. The way we find the particular solution's coefficients is we just plug them into the differential equation. So we need the derivative of xp, which is negative c sine t plus d cosine t, uh, plus twice the original uh, xp, which is c cosine t plus d sine t. When we add these together, uh, we end up with 2c plus d cosine t plus d 2d minus c sine t. And this has to be equal to the right-hand side of our equation. And so we know that that has to be 2 cosine t. Now, we actually need to solve for to two coefficients, c and d. So I'm going to add a dummy term, which is 0 times sine of t. This really helps because what we really need to do is we need to line up the coefficients of the cosine and of the sine terms, and then that gives us two equations and two unknowns. So we have 2c plus d is equal to 2, and we have 2d minus c is equal to 0. This second equation tells us that c is equal to 2d. Then we can plug that into our first equation, which tells us that 4d plus d is equal to 2. In other words, d is equal to 2 over 5. And then that means c is equal to 4 over 5. So now we have our particular solution, which we can add to the original, so that we have a e to the negative 2t plus 4 fifths cosine t plus 2 fifths sine t. I didn't solve for a because we can use initial conditions to solve for that, and we know already how, how to do that. So this shows us what the sinusoidal uh, response is going to be for the input cosine 2 cosine t. I should also mention that another way of writing the same thing is a e to the negative 2t plus some amplitude times cosine of t plus some phase phi where E and phi can be found using the preceding formula that we gave you.